I've made my decision already. But I want to see how that God will help all of us together to come into this decision. How to be wealthy. How to be wealthy. This is how to be wealthy. I want to give you the keys. And I give you a guarantee in the name of the Lord God of heaven. That if you are childlike enough to take these things I'm telling you. You and poverty will part ways forever. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. Hallelujah. Number one. The first key to really being wealthy is to make the decision to be wealthy. Write that word down, decision. The decision to be wealthy. The decision to be wealthy. Brothers and sisters, look at me. You came to Koinonia tonight because you decided to be here, true or false. You would have been in any other place. But right from morning, you had set it that you will be here. And nothing stopped you. No witch from your village appeared on the road and said, go back. Because of the power of your decision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, there is a difference between a wish and a decision. A wish is a desire. A wish is a craving. Nothing more. Many people wish to be wealthy. You go outside and stand. Hold 1,000 naira notes or 100,000 or a million and wave it and say, who wants to have this type all his life? You will be shocked to see all kinds of people come. Embracing that message. Oh, I want to be rich. However, many people think a wish is a decision. No, sir. A decision is a strong desire. Write it down. A decision is a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness backed up by the willingness to pay the price to see that desire accomplished. That's a decision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. Many of you think you have decided to be blessed. You have, you hate poverty. You like prosperity. But you have not decided. The very first reason. Is God speaking to us? I can prove to you. Excuse me. I can prove to you that you have not made that decision. Show me what you are doing right now in your life. To support your decision. You decided to love God. And that decision. I can see the things you are doing. I see you running away from a nightclub. That is a sacrifice to honor your decision. Is that true? I see you panting after the word of God. I see you using the money that you should buy. Shoes and clothes with. To buy an electronic device. That you can use for your spiritual growth. That is a proof that you have decided. Hallelujah. I've seen you pray and fast for three days. One week. Or that one month. Because you want to rise in the level of the anointing. You have decided to contend for the anointing. A decision is never a decision. Until there is a willingness and a readiness. To accept the responsibility. That will make that decision come to pass. So many have not decided to be wealthy. They want to be wealthy. Every time they hear success stories, they look and they say, ah, how did you do it? Ken, Ken, Ken. Ah, money like you. You see, all those kinds of cliches. And they turn, they say, ah, Nigeria is good for you, for some of us talk. They have not decided. How many times have you seen a very wealthy man that you have access to? And you came and sat down and bought five alive. Dropped it at the feet of the person and said, I came purposely because I want you to teach me the principles. You are wealthy. I've seen the proof. Other people just come and loiter the gate of rich people. 
with all kinds of pregnant expectations hoping that their rent will be paid through the, that coming and the man drags his wife and their two children as proof to the man that the, the situation is serious and they stand in front of his gate uncle it's me who uh, James with James about why are you treating me like this see my two children even if it's not for us just for my two children watch this the uncle counts 250,000 is that not true gives James what does the man tell the uncle thank you foolish man rather than receiving the money to say by the way sir sit on the floor and say junior whatever bring me a paper I want this to be the last time I'm receiving money from you what can I learn they collect the money and say thank you and go and commit the same blunder they did and by next year they are back again hey, uncle don't be angry oh. it's me again and some even say do you know it's because of me that God is blessing you it's because you don't know the prayer I'm praying for you pray for yourself like that you try to make people feel guilty because you think that you have a stake in their wealth are you getting what I'm saying some of you have very wealthy parents and you are just hoping that you when you get to 30 or 40 they will now call you and say now you're a man you have three children this estate is for you what sort of a dream is that everybody say I decide to be wealthy it's shocking some of you right now because you are seeing that you have never decided you decided to get married some of you have made a decision I must marry this year you gave it a time target you made a decision right now you are on your fifth marriage book and you will truly marry because you decided to but you won't be rich because you have not decided to you hope you will be rich you pray you will be rich you wish you will be rich you beg to be rich you want to lambano the richness or riches no matter what greek and hebrew word you speak let me tell you the truth if you do not know the path to wealth you will you will end up in bitter frustration hallelujah those in school, you are in school today because you decided to be in school. There was a time you looked at that course and you said, Kai. But something in you, it was your decision that made you to run and go and write the exam in the midst of the rain. Your umbrella was missing, but you know, 8.30, they may not allow you to enter. That decision sponsored that sacrifice. And you didn't apologize to yourself. Decisions are powerful. You preach a salvation message and you give people room and they decide I want to give my heart to the Lord and they prove that it's not just a wish by standing up to ignore the shame and the embarrassment and sometimes you see people stand crying they mean business with God you are seated here right now because you decided to sit down at the point you are tired of sitting you have every right unhindered to get up and walk out of this place is that true you are only seated here because of your decision we do this in every other area except our finances because we have been taught that it will happen automatically you must decide to be wealthy you can decide to reject poverty that's not the same as deciding to be wealthy I made up my mind that I was going to be wealthy that I was going to be blessed I took out time to make sure it was a decision that I honored and there is nothing that would change my mind about it right here where you are sitting look at me if you decide that what you need right now is 2000 to cure the current hunger because of that decision the 2000 will come but afterwards you will be poor is that true but you can decide and say i don't know the way i don't know what to do i'm clueless about the direction but start with a decision all decisions are free you don't pay for them that's why every man who is poor has a right to remain poor decisions are free you pay for knowledge you don't pay for decisions 
Is God speaking to us? Decisions are absolutely free. Decisions depend on you alone. They don't depend on the cooperation of another person. So you have no excuse to say, I would have decided, but Kai, the way I saw this guy looking at me, what if I... No, 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 no. It's a personal decision. I will. I will. I release my will. I make that choice. I choose to partner with God. I choose to partner with the spirit of wisdom. Lay your hands on your head and say, I decide to be blessed. Say, I decide to end poverty. I decide to be wealthy. I may not know what to do. I may not know how to go about it. I may not know how to come out of my present situation. But I decide in the name of the Lord Jesus to be wealthy. This looks very simple. You only invite God into your financial life when you decide. The same way you invited Him into your life, spiritually speaking, when you made the decision. Behold, I stand at the door. And what? If He knocked your heart to come into your life, He will knock on the door of your finances and remain there until you decide to invite Him. You may not know what to do, brothers and sisters, but can you decide? Your father went to school. Your mother went to school. Your father got a job, but they never decided to be wealthy. They decided to get jobs, and so they got it. They decided to marry. They decided, how many children are we going to have? One said three, one had five. They voted. Majority carried the vote. You are five now. Right? Because of that decision. You decided to wear the dress that you are wearing today. No demon in your village, I say it again, Africa, no demon in your village showed up in your wardrobe and said, this one is my own. No. As you were picking the shirt, no spirit paralyzed your hand because your decisions were honored both by God and the devil. Is that true? You had a choice. We trivialize the power of decisions in our finances. And so you see a lot of people outside. This is how they talk. Kai, when will my story change? Oh God, oh God, that changes stories. That's not a decision. That's a communication of regret and frustration. It's not a decision. Oh, oh Lord, this job, if my area comes, ah, my life will change. It's still not a decision. A decision is I have come to the end of my life. I have seen what has happened to my father and my mother. I've seen myself beg my way through life. I have seen the fierceness of society. I have seen the inevitable frustration that comes as a result of poverty. And I decide, I make up my mind that my life is not going to be this way. Brothers and sisters, you are not drinking today because you decided to. There are bars that are open. Today is Friday. True or false? There were some of you who were drinking before. Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon you, but it did not come upon a hardened heart. You could not change yourself, but you decided to embrace change. And so the change came. You may not have the power to change, but you have the decision to permit that power to come. Is God speaking to us? Say it again. I decide. To break that barrier of poverty in my family and in my life. Say, I decide that I will be wealthy. I will be blessed. That wealth and riches will be in my house. A true decision must be set as a goal. What is a goal? A goal is an expectation. A goal is an expectation. A clearly defined expectation. Clearly defined expectation. That's a goal. 
the moment you you set it as a goal to marry if you are not in a relationship what automatically it's like your love mode is switched on and suddenly you can see the difference between rose and um what's her name huh vicky you can see the difference between what's her name ada and all these people all of a sudden if you have not decided to marry you will see everybody as a sister in the lord a sister in the vineyard and all of these kinds of evangelistic things that dimension will never be activated until you decide true or false if you decide to be a competent musician or worship minister you will begin to discern difference between what you are doing and what they are doing Otherwise, if you come and you have a general sense, you can sing and go off key and be smiling. You don't even know you've gone off key. Because there is no passion in that area. You have not set it as a goal. Goals give us focus. It, it, it weeds away distractions in our lives. Man can only accomplish what he sets as a goal. So every other thing becomes secondary and you focus on that one thing until it's accomplished are you seeing now so if you put it as a goal to be financially blessed the devil tells you this is too carnal how can you put money in front of you like this and say i'm putting it as a goal whereas you do not know that it's a goal that can be accomplished so that it will give you room to focus on more spiritual goals hallelujah I only imagine the times that we will now begin to go on air, launch TV ministries, now start building structures and facilities for ourselves. These structures will cost hundreds of millions and billions of naira. If we ignore, thank God we are a ministry that is very unapologetic about the reality and the necessity of wealth in building the kingdom. And so we have irresponsible fathers. A woman gets up, she's pregnant, but she's going to go and fend for the family. And the man who got her pregnant sits down there, guiltless. Right? And just living his life, hoping. She will go and look for money and come back and cook. And the man will eat. And say, Kai, why? I, I thought we used to eat chicken. What has happened to the chicken? Now he did not contribute in any way. And he, there is no sense of apology. He's just waiting for her to give birth to that one and get her pregnant again. Without any sense. Because he has not decided. He has not seen the relevance of finance in family building. Help us tonight, oh God. Is God speaking to us? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to not in any way ignore what I'm telling you. It won't do me any harm because I've made my decision. What I'm doing to you right now is my contribution to stop your tears of the future what i'm doing for you right now is my contribution to help you break that genes of poverty once and for all so that you can enjoy the abundance that god has prepared for you the first way to be wealthy is to decide to set it as a goal you must set it as a goal there is nothing in life that you will accomplish if you do not set it as a goal you set your degree as a goal and no matter what it is your mind is on it the day you hold your certificate mission accomplished you get another goal you cannot put finances as one of those things and vaguely just say yes yes we'll look at it by god's grace when i start working i'll plan around my finances let me tell you that disrespect that dishonor for wealth will cost you more than you can bargain for i watched my family i've told you my story again and again i came from a very good christian family never been all these boys that go around doing all kinds of things i don't have all those necessary all those kinds of very funny parts but one thing that i saw both of my parents they are, they are retired now but then both of them worked they started working early my father started working at 26 years brothers and sisters and he's never lost a job 
But in his old age, I saw that man suffer. I said, well, what is the meaning of this? There are many of us right now. You sit down and you watch your father and you watch the tears out of his eyes. Because nothing can be done about the situation. Your father will go and ask you to borrow 2,000 naira from a neighbor. Somebody who was once a small boy pushing Gere Gere around your street. Now he has become blessed. And your father will say, please tell him, Baba said you should give 2,000. You be the one to go and collect it. You feel guilty. He goes his tongue a thousand times as he counts 2,000 and gives you. You go and give your father. You buy something and he returns the change. The lunch and the dinner of that family is dependent on that 2,000. And everybody eats and goes back. And all you do in the night is to cry. Crying does not produce change. It may comfort you emotionally. But you must set it as a goal. I can remember the day in my life I vowed before God that me and poverty we have drawn the line. It was a decision. I made up my mind that whatever it would cost me under God to explore what it would take to get out of this thing. I never want to look at my children one day and see that I cannot afford to pay school fees for them or I cannot afford to bless them. There are so many people Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you came for Koinonia and you saw that there were no chairs everywhere is parked. And we say, brethren, um, there is a serious financial situation here right now. Everybody, can you contribute whatever you can bring? We need to buy fuel. We need one jerry can of fuel as a matter of life and death. Oh, apostle has not eaten. If you really want to hear anything sensible this night, please, let's rally around and rush and see how we can come to the rescue. You laugh about it and you trivialize it today. May God give you grace to start a ministry and you will respect what I'm saying. You will see how that you can pray and tongues won't come out because you cannot see where the finances will come out. And you stop. You will know when you stop. The load on your head is not demons. You are hearing voices. You are seeing things. That's what makes many of our fathers to be. They didn't start like that. At 40, he's talking to himself. Right? He sees you and calls you by the name of your elder brother. You think it's his fault? Something happened. A load that would have been lifted and thrown away was permitted to sit on his head for a long time. And that's the result. And many of us, as young as we are, that load is already coming shortly. You found out that you used to be kind and nice. Now at 27, see how angry you are at everybody. Welcome. The load is landing. It's like a leaf. By the time you are 31, you hate everybody around you. 40, you hate your wife. 45, you hate your children. 50, you hate yourself. See that? Number two. There is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. That is for next week. Next week I'm going to be teaching you the formula for wealth. But right now, allow me to be a surgeon as we do a little x-ray just for a few minutes on our minds to help us. For the formula, we'll talk about that. The first way to be wealthy is the decision to be wealthy. Second is to know that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. Three, the mental transition that brings wealth. You must understand the mental transition that brings wealth. The mental transition that brings wealth. Guys, come and help me. I think these things are gone. Let's push it forward. Let me have three people here, please. Everybody watch what I'm about to demonstrate. Never forget this for the rest of your life. One here, one here, one here, quickly. classify people into three in terms of mindset and transitions. Everybody watch please. You will see yourself right now. There are three types of people based on mindset versus their physical realities. Generally speaking, listen, generally speaking there is a law and this is the law that your physical condition your physical condition today 
today whether you believe it or not is a reflection of your ideology so far your physical condition today is a reflection of your thinking of yesterday are you getting me your physical condition tomorrow will be a reflection of what you are thinking right now your thought process your mindset the content of your ideologies a direct exact reflection of your thought life and the quality of your mindset the level of ministry that we are enjoying right now is a direct reflection of what our mindset and understanding about ministry has been if we never upgrade this is the level we remain forever but if we upgrade then we rise your music ministry your life whatever it is that is happening in your life i'm telling you right now is a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideology let's have that in mind so i look at my life today and all that i see is a reflection of the way i have thought about god about success about people about ministry about life there are three people watch this the first type of people that we have are those who have poor mindsets and poor physical realities write it a poor mindset dash poor physical reality that's the first kind I'm giving you a classification of people now in terms of wealth this guy in this example now has a poisonous mindset about wealth this is the guy that sleeps under the bridge this is the guy that smokes around this is the guy that believes that cheating and looting is the way forward this is the guy angry with his uncle this is the guy angry with god this is the guy angry with government angry with his boss in office there is a mindset that he has and there is nothing in his life he's living a beggarly life he's living a poor life and he has a lot of contemporaries who are like him are you getting my teaching now all his contemporaries think like him they think like him so they all discuss you hear them say things like Kai, one day go better that's the mindset poor mentality they are the ones who borrow to do everything they borrow to eat they borrow to buy clothes they borrow to buy phones they do everything borrowing 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 and they live perpetually in the course of death this is the question i won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. This guy is blaming the witches in his village the reason why he's poor he's blaming his grandfather that cannot walk and he's saying the way he looked at me when i went to the village the way his eyes was that's why i'm poor are you seeing that this guy is blaming his class of degree to why he's poor this guy is angry with everybody he wants to change he hates rich people he hates blessed people he gossips about them he resents them and he's hoping to be like them paradox could that be you could this be you i'm describing right now i know you are praying in tongues but could that be you that right now the reason why your life has not changed the reason why your pocket is empty listen the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not money in their pocket money in their pocket is a, is a reflection of something going right money in their pocket is a sign that they have gotten something right the money in their pocket their financial abundance is their receipt in the school of wealth is a sign that they have purchased something are you getting what i'm saying 
unfortunately we concentrate on changing our physical reality this guy this guy is striking from pillar to post this guy is living under a place where there is no roof maybe an uncompleted building this guy has been rejected by his family this guy wants change he cries every night oh god of heaven will you not wipe my tears but nothing changes god seems to be infinitely silent about his situation because he does not know that before he prayed the prayer had been long answered god will not answer the same prayer twice the reason why